Okay, got a 2004 GMC Sierra. And this thing has some brake issues. It's not wanting to stop. But anyway, this is my truck. But this thing for a while now has been getting to where the more you press on the pedal, it just the softer it feels. If you're just moving around in the parking lot or something like that, then it seems okay. But if you got a trailer on it or you're trying to do a panic stop, it just doesn't do well. So the other day I blew a brake line going to the back wheel. And the brake line looked good except for one little spot. So I replaced that brake line and I've bled these back out and I've used the ABS, um, or the, let me rephrase that. I used the scanner and bled the ABS unit several times and I believe I got all the air out but I still got a mushy pedal. So the first thing I'm going to do here is jack this thing up and get the wheels off of it. And then, um, like I say, I just put a new line going to the back. So where do I start there on the back of this truck? Now here's the line on the passenger side rear. See, everything appears to look good. Visually. And the lines may be fine. Now I've decided to take the spare tire down and um, that open square end is what it needs. But anyway, we get this out of the way, that's going to open things up a lot to work up in there. Okay, now from looking at the rear of the truck from the driver's side, this is where that brake line comes to. I just put that on the other day because I didn't have no nickel copper brake line. Now I just put that brake line on so I know that nut will come off. But you want to get that line nut loose first. Um, spray it or whatever if you're trying to save the line. It's been on there for a while with penetrant oil or something. Now this clip here you see has got a hollow spot the way it's folded over. Once you get that line loose you can just take a screwdriver or something back here and you can push that clip right off of there. Then it'll be the top of the rubber brake line. Okay, so if we follow that brake line down, it comes here to the rear axle. And there is a bolt right here in the top, that's the Torx. And your two nuts here for the line nuts. Now, I suggest getting the line nuts loose first and then this one here. The other thing is too, especially if you're using these lines or no matter what you're doing, you need to try to brush this stuff off, blow it off, whatever you can do to try to get rid of as much dirt as you can so you're not getting it in the brake system. I also suggest trying to use a line wrench. Keep in mind when you turn this wrench, you're going to want to make sure and watch the line here. If the line turns with the nut, and you keep turning it, you're just going to twist the line off. Sometimes if you see it, if you just barely turn it and you see it's on a stick, you can spray that again or tap on it a little bit. Lay with it, try to get it loose, but if you try to force it, you will break the line. Now this is a T40 Torx, but make sure you get down in there really good with a pick or something. Get the dirt out. That's how all these torques get screwed up, especially when it sits like that with it straight up at the top. It just fills up. So I don't want to do that and blow that out. Okay, that clip, you get behind it there and you can pull it right off of there. Now one thing to keep in mind, see how that goes through the bracket there and it's held on by a clip? The new Russell lines don't use that clip. They have a nut here. Alright, so I got the center line on. Now you want to make sure that you hold this bottom right here, it's 11 16 and make sure you don't have no bind or twist on this line and then tighten the one inch nut on top of it. Then your brake line. Okay, now that we got the center on, we'll move over to one of these on the side here. And I had a line wrench and broke this loose, so we want to go ahead and take this 
brake line loose. Okay, I've got that clip started off there. You see the hole in the middle, and there's the brake line. You put something in the middle there if you can, and pry off the brake line, and then clips will come right out. I already had that one started, so. Okay, now this end does have a new caliper on it, because I went to pull the bleeder out of the other one the other day, and it took the threads out of aluminum with it. That's why we usually don't do that on every customer's car when doing a brake job. But this banjo bolt has a hole in the center, and it has a copper washer here, and it has a copper washer in the back here. Now they give you some new aluminum washers, and we need to reuse this bolt. So sometimes you got to kind of thread this washer off, but we need to get that bolt out of there. Okay, so you got this other washer right here, and what I do, if it's stuck, I'll get a pick and get behind it, and it'll usually come right off. Now what they give you here is aluminum instead of the copper ones. Okay, now this one's marked left rear. We're working on the left rear. You want to put one of those washers on, put the bolt through, and the other washer goes right here. And then you bolt this right to that caliper. Now if you look at this clip, you see how the ears down here has that kink or bend in them and the top's flat? Well, this bended in goes back toward what you're trying to hold. So I don't know how these are going to work on these compared to the new one or the originals. But let me get that down on there. Okay, so I've done the same on the right rear here. All the lines are connected back onto the back and tight. So what I've done here, I loosened the bleeder and took the top off the master cylinder. Now, if you wanted to and had time, you could just let it sit there and it would eventually gravity bleed itself. But I got this little air suction thingy. You can use the vacuum pump ones. You could bleed it any way you want to. I'm just gonna do it this way because this will be a little quicker than just letting the gravity bleed. Okay, so I got them all bled out. Now, if you got the rubber caps for your bleeders, that's a good idea to put them back on now. So far, everything's fit good. I did redo this line here. Um, that's what the nickel, copper nickel brake line, whatever. But anyway, other than that, having to redo the brake line, everything on the side of these Russell lines went really easy. They all seem to fit pretty good. Like I say, you just gotta remember not to get them all twisted up. Hold this with a wrench when you tighten this stuff. But everything so far, I'm happy with. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit the brakes a few times with this thing and look at every place we made a connection and make sure there's no leaking. And once I verify there's no leaks, I can put the tires back on here and we can go toward the front and see what we got. Okay, we got up here on the front. I done the same as the back there. I took the line out and um, it's just a bolt in thing here. This bracket will bolt right onto the A-arm and hangs down. You run that line around here and it it isn't the same length as the original, but it's gonna be fine. When you put it on here by the bleeder, you want to make sure that, because you can spin this any way you want, you got to make sure that that's clearance by the bleeder. Now see here what I did? I put that bolt in there where it came out of, just to show you here. That leaves you with no way to put this um, anti-lock brake wire, if you do it that way. Now what they do though, is they give you four of these. So let's go on the other side and see how they're supposed to be. And you don't have to take all the inner fenders and stuff out. I just replaced the brake lines while I was in there. Okay, now on the driver's side here, you can see I also replaced that line coming in there. But it's the same thing. This bracket just bolts on. Now this one I did have to take 
the bracket off the clamp and flip it to make the angle the right way. When you get up here to the front though, see they use the front hole on this side. So you put both clamps together like that and that will hold the ABS wire plus this line. And the same thing here, you just got to make sure when you put that on there you got that clearanced out. Okay, back to this um, right front, passenger side front. It says about tapping the hole, cleaning the hole threads out, but it's really crusty looking in there. I just kind of improvised and did the same thing only back here and I think it'll be alright. Instead of putting the front hole, I just went and used that back hole. So now I need to bleed all these brakes. I probably won't take you through that because I changed every brake line on the truck so I don't get these all bled out and then we'll see how these lines feel. Okay it's been about a month now since I put the Russell brake lines on this truck and I am feeling a better pedal feel than I did before. <coughs> um, I think I had a one in the back coming in the frame down. I think it was swelling some when you hit the brakes. So if you had a truck with all new brake hoses on it and you put the Russells on, I could not say whether you'd feel a difference or not, but I can tell you I felt a difference when I put them on here. So would I do it again? Yes. If I had to replace the rubber brake lines again, I would do them with the stainless braided um, Russell lines. They wasn't that much difference in price than replacing all the lines with stock ones so but so far I got a better brake feel it feels a little safer to drive 